We are back at AP Review. This is 2018 AB free response 2, uh, which is a particle motion problem. So a particle moves along the x-axis with velocity given by v of t equals this thing uh, for values from t is 0 to 3.5 inclusive. And we're given that the position uh, x of the particle is negative 5 when t is 0. Cool. So first thing you're going to do, because this is a calculator problem, is you're going to put this guy in as y1 and you're going to use x for your t's, right? Uh, so I'm going to put that in as y1. Uh, cool. All right, oh, fair warning, my calculator is low on batteries, which is not a thing you should ever let your calculator do, but here we are. Okay, uh, cool. So first thing we're asked in part A is to find the acceleration of the particle at t equals 3. Now, this is a calculator problem, so your calculator is going to do all the heavy lifting. What you need to understand is simply that the acceleration at 3 is the same as v prime of 3. That's what you should communicate, and then, boom, you should get an answer. They didn't give you units, uh, so you don't have to come up with units. So when you're asked to derive, there are two logical ways to do this. You can either do math 8, which is fine, and you can go to vers y1 right, with respect to x at 3, and that's great and totally fine, okay, that's one option. Uh, there's another cool way to do this, so it's a negative 2.118, right, and they didn't give me units, so I don't need units, uh, and again, you should know that the way to do this is by going to uh, n derive, which is math 8, y1, with respect to x at 3, and that's how you get that, but there is another interesting way to do it that's harder for me to write on the board, but I can show you, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom 6 for a sec, uh, cool. It doesn't matter that my window is kind of terrible because I just needed to make sure that three, or that 3 was in the window. So a cool thing you can do is if you hit trace on your calculator, it'll give you the option. I'm sorry, not trace. If you hit second uh, calc, yeah. If you hit second calc, uh, it'll give you the option to calculate dy dx. So if I hit that and, I, and then I enter t x is 3, it'll give me the same value, right? So you can do second calc, right? So again, I did second calc. Uh, I picked 6, which is dy dx, right? And then I picked at the moment when x, which is my t in this case, is 3, and there you go, right? So that's all you need for part A. Part B, find the position of the particle at t equals 3. So this is that first uh, fundamental theorem of calculus problem, right? So we know that in order to find position, we want to integrate velocity, right? So it's worth noting that, uh, so I'm going to erase my A and do it on my part B, right? So for part B, remember that velocity is the same as x prime of t, right? So if you were to integrate x prime of t from 0 to 3 with respect to t, based on the first fundamental theorem of calculus, you would get x of 3, which is the thing that you want, minus x of 0, which is a quantity that you absolutely know, right? So uh, this is a thing that you can make your calculator do, right? So what I'm going to do, and again, v of t is the same as x prime of t, I'm going to say that if I add x of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 3 of v of t, which I can make my calculator do uh, with respect to t, I'm going to get x of 3. And that's really what I have to communicate, and then I'm going to use my calculator to do the rest. So this will be a negative 5 uh, plus and then I'm going to go ahead and integrate this thing uh, from 0 to 3. Uh, so my calculator is going to do this work, right? Uh, when you make your calculator do this work, the way you do it is you go to math 9, which is function integrate y1 with respect to x from 0 to 3, right? Uh, and there are other ways to do it, but that's the easiest way to do it. So, uh, so I'm going to quit out of here, right? I'm going to do negative 5 plus math 9. There's pick function... Uh, from x, uh, with respect to x from 0 to 3, and I hit enter, and I should get an answer. Obviously, do make sure you're in uh, radian mode. That's, you know, hopefully goes without saying. So my position is negative 1.760. So I get an answer that is negative 1.760. Again, no units were given in this problem, so you should not supply units. Part C. Evaluate the integral from 0 to 3.5 of v of t, and evaluate the integral from 0 to 3.5 of the absolute value of v of t. Interpret the meaning of each integral. Okay, so one of these is integrating velocity, and one of these is integrating uh, speed, right? So part c, we're asked to do two things. We're asked to integrate v of t dt from 0 to 3, which by the way, we just did. We just did it with a, uh, we just did it with a, a negative 5 in front. So if I were you, I'd hit second enter and go up and just delete the negative 5. So uh, I do that and I get 3.239 or 40, right? Um, and this is the displacement. Oh, I'm sorry, they said 3.5. My bad. Uh, I take it back. Second enter. 
uh, 3.5, my bad, uh, 3.5. Oops, attention to detail, mea culpa, so 3.5, uh, and I get, sorry, 2.843, or 844, four, depending on if you round or truncate. Um, so this is the displacement of the particle uh, over the time from t equals 0 to t equals 3.5, right? Um, but if I integrate the absolute value of velocity, which again, I'm going to go back and just hit second enter and change that real quick, uh, I do that by throwing in an abs, right? So I uh, hit second enter, right? I'm going to go here and I'm going to second insert, go to math, number, and pick abs, right? And then second insert a parenthesis after your y1, right? Uh, so when I integrate this, I'm going to get a larger number if the particle changed direction or the same number if the particle didn't, which we can talk about in a sec. It's still thinking. That's why we're happy we have a calculator. All right, cool. And I get 3. 0.737. This is the total distance traveled uh, over the time from t equals zero to t equals three. So, uh, sorry, 3.5. So a couple things you want to have in your in your work, right? You want to make sure that you reference the time interval. You could either do it the same way they did up here with the less than or equal to uh, here and here. That's fine. Um, but you want to make sure you mention the time interval and you need to make sure that you know the difference between displacement and total distance, right? Uh, so total distance is, is what happens when you integrate speed. That's the difference here. Uh, part um, D, sorry. Uh, a second particle moves along the x-axis with a position that is given by x sub 2 of t equals t squared minus t from 0 to 3.5. Again, uh, at what time t are the two particles moving with the same velocity? Okay, so what they're really asking here, they gave you, in part d, they gave you this x2 of t to be t squared minus t. So if you wanted v2 of t, it would just be x prime 2 right, of t. So that would be a 2t minus 1, right? So really what they're asking you is, when is this equal to this? Well, I'm going to put this guy in as my y2 and second calc intersect. So I put into y2, right? So, so what they're asking me to find is they want to know when v of t equals 2t minus 1, uh, again, on that window from 0 to 3.5, right? So I'm going to do that by plugging in 2x minus 1 into my y2 and graphing it. And then I'm going to second calc intersect. Second calc intersect. And since there's, it's a little zoomed out, which is not ideal, but we can check and see. But it looks like there's only the one point of intersection. Uh, so I get that t is approximately 1.57 zero or one, depending on if you round or truncate. Uh, and they asked, that's all they want. They want at what time are they moving with the same velocity? And that's my answer. So I needed to find when essentially my original velocity was equal to this v2 of t, the new velocity that I have for the other particle.